Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Culination Media and welcome back to another episode of Metroid Prime. This is episode number 15 and in the last couple of episodes we've been kind of straying off the uh, game path and uh, getting a bunch of optional things including a bunch of missile expansions and then in the last episode we obtained the Wave Buster which um, I will be using probably in this episode I imagine because there's some beetles and stuff that we have to kill along the way to our next destination so I might as well put it to some good use like I said I love that weapon so I don't mind how much missiles um, it takes up but anyway um, yeah in this episode we're going to be actually doing what the game wants us to do for a change instead of going off on all these little side quests and um, it wants us to go to a room called the antechamber here at the uh, Chozo ruins and um, it says that there's been abnormal uh, temperature readings, abnormally low temperature readings um, in this room or this area. So that's where we're headed. And we're going to pass through a bunch of the uh, areas that we've already been through uh, during our first time through the Chozo Ruins. We were getting the Morph Ball, the Morph Ball Bomb, Charge Beam, all that good stuff. And yeah, we're going to be actually heading to a room called the Furnace. And there's something new that we can do there because we now have the spider ball. So that's where we're headed. Um, in any case, um, if you noticed on the map, uh, here is the actual uh, spider ball track here. And we're going to boost across these disappearing platforms. But anyway, uh, the antechamber actually has um, an ice beam door blocking it. And a couple of them, because actually one of them's in this room here. So we need to find another way to get to the antechamber because of all these ice beam doors that we would have to go through to get there. So, um, yeah, we're gonna figure that out in a second. But first, we have a new enemy, Plated Parasite, hardy member of the Parasite family, invulnerable to most weaponry. A cousin to the Parasite, these creatures are known for their amazing resilience. Field studies suggest a weakness to Morph Ball delivered weapon systems, which means Morph Ball bombs, but we actually don't have to worry about that because the only way to get up to those spider ball tracks is by destroying this bendesium portion of the wall here, which can only be destroyed by power bombs, which we don't have yet, so we're just going to ignore all of that and go right to the lore. The cries of this dying land pulled us from our dreaming state, and now we chose a walk as ghosts as the great poison sinks into the trees and waters, devouring all life. Some creatures survive, but their forms grow as twisted and evil as the force that fell from the sky. The heart of the planet will succumb soon, and so will we, even in our ghostly states. Already many Chozo have faded and passed into the unknown. The great poison is unlike anything that we have glimpsed in this or any dimension. It eats relentlessly, worming out life wherever it blooms, which is kind of weird, and corrupting. What it cannot kill, it will be our undoing. Our last hope lies in the Cradle, the temple that we hope might contain this abomination. And that's the Impact Crater. It is almost complete, hovering over the Impact Site, the dark heart of the spreading evil. And if we can finish before the last of our kind drifts into madness or death, there is a chance for this world. If we fail, we are doomed with it. And obviously they were doomed with it because the Chozo are extinct. And yeah... That kind of sucks. But uh, yeah, moving on. We're going to go through this morph ball hole because that's the only way to get into the rooms that we need to get into, judging as uh, how we don't have the ice beam to get through those doors. So anywho, we're going to go through this wave beam door here, and this will lead into a room called the Crossway, and uh, there's some stuff to be scanned over there. There's going to be a bunch of lures to grab as well. There's a door to our right that is an ice beam door, so... Uh, yeah, there's no point in going over there, but in the meantime, we have three different Chozo lures to scan, so lots of reading and backstory going on now. So basically, this is just going to talk about uh, the space pirates and things like that, and I'll read some of it. So, yeah, you're talking about the marauding creatures descended from space and invaded our temple, the Cradle, which is the space pirates, obviously. They try in vain to destroy it, but its power remains beyond them for now. They possess some of the 12 artifacts we call the Cypher, yet do not comprehend their function. They're ignorant creatures. They are blinded by the illusions of harnessing the great poison for their own designs. 
They walk about as masters of the planet, assimilating the ruins of our sanctuary into their experiments. We can but watch and wait for our doom. And the space pirates are indeed ignorant and evil creatures trying to destroy the Chozo land. The hatchling walks among us. Are these dreams, memories, foretellings, time and reality swirl together like estuary waters? And we Chozo know not what to believe. She appears as ghost-like as the Chozo, but at times she mists clear. We see her wounded eyes and remember the child we found so long ago. What has she become, this newborn, clad in Chozo armor, wielding weapons our hands once held? Does she dream of the Chozo as we once were? Does she long for her parents, lost to the same creatures that even now defile our sacred home? Does she still live? And obviously we do live because she's talking about, they're talking about us. We're the hatchling, the newborn. The prophecies tell of the coming of the worm, born from parasites nurtured in a poisoned womb. It grows, devouring from within until the world begins to rot. The words of the seers have come to pass. For there in the depths of the world, the ravenous worm lurks and feeds from the stars it came, blighting Talon with the great poison. We can but watch as the worm grows, watch and wait. For the prophecies also speak of a great defender, the one who delivers the world from evil. The final days draw near. Is the newborn the defender of which the seer spoke? We shall do all that we can to aid her, for she bears our legacy as she bears the ancient armor and ancient weapons of our people. And the worm is obviously going to be the final boss of this game, Metroid Prime. And uh, before moving on, notice that this is a cordite statue, so you can blow it up with a super missile. And we can now scan that. Something behind the wall seems to have been activated. And a cutscene will ensue in which uh, spider ball tracks will appear um, pretty much uh, off to the left there. So we're going to use the boost ball on this um, half pipe like structure here. And eventually we'll be able to get high enough so we can latch on with the spider ball. And then we can lay a bomb in the slot. And that's going to activate another set of spider ball tracks which um, will lead to another Morph Ball bomb slot. And yeah, I was able to get enough traction there to get up there pretty quickly. And once we lay a bomb in this slot, we're going to activate this little Morph Ball elevator thingy-majiggy. And it does have a time limit, but it's kind of stupid because you're pretty much right there. Anyway, get off, go right to the left, and you can receive a missile expansion and then just drop down to the bottom and you can use the Morph Ball, or not the Morph Ball, the Boost Ball in Morph Ball mode, obviously, to get back up to the top. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It looks like that is a dead end, so I probably shouldn't go that way. Blow up the Missile Door, and onwards we go. And, oh, I thought there was something to be scanned there, but apparently not. Only the Holder of Twelve shall face the Worm. And that's obviously talking about the uh, artifacts, but... We can't do a whole lot with the artifacts because, honestly, a lot of them require either the power bomb or um, the plasma beam. So we're not even close to grabbing any of those. I'll try to grab the artifacts as they become available, but we'll see how that goes. It's probably going to wait till almost the end of the game. All right, so looks like there's a lock system engaged, so we can't leave the room because there's Chozo ghosts here. And, yeah, I already scanned them, so... There's that. We fought them in the room where Flogger was. And um, if you haven't been back to this room, this is the first place that you've seen one of these ghosts. And this time there's only one, but um, I believe every time after this, there's going to be three. So you need to, yeah, kind of be careful there. So this statue has this little glowing spot in his hand. And all you need to do is just go into morph ball mode and he'll kind of grab you strangely and move because, I don't know, it's weird. And he'll shoot you up to these spider ball tracks to so make sure you have the R button held down. And then uh, there's a morph ball slot there. So when you activate that, there's going to be these three other morph ball slots activated across the room that are actually guarded by barriers that resemble the colors of the beams of the game. And... Uh, obviously, the purple one is going to be the wave beam, the white one is the ice beam, and the red one is the plasma beam. And we'll get to that in a second, but first we have a Chozo lore here. More and more our tormented minds turn to the newborn. That's us. 
As the world continues to shift, she remains in arguably real, a fearless figure delving deeper into this blighted world, unmindful of the terrors that await her. Was she this way before? When we Chozo found her, a fledgling orphaned, we were orphaned on a savage planet. Did a warrior's pulse already beat in her veins, filling her with righteous fury? Probably our hopes lie with her. We leave these messages for her, that she may find our artifacts and deliver the world from its evils. And we shall fight the invaders and the poison they would master until the end. Okay, but apparently that didn't work out so well for you because you are extinct and all that stuff. So yeah, that's that. There's been a lot of lores in this uh, episode so far. But yeah, you'll notice I'm not reading every single word of all of them because it's not really necessary. As long as you get the gist of the backstory, that's what is important. But anywho, what in the world is this? You're going to want to scan this because it is um, into the research section of your logbook. It's just called a missile station, and you can pretty much just waste all of your missiles and then go step inside of it. And it's not as good as a safe, safe station, so to speak, but um, yeah, it will completely restore all of your missiles, so that's cool. So now we're back to... Ah, crap. Apparently I needed to do it twice because it's that important. You can skip the cutscene by pressing start, by the way. And anyway, now I have all 90 of my missiles back, and actually I didn't even know I could carry that many. I thought it was like 75 or something, but not complaining. Alright, so now back over here, uh, we only have the wave beam, so we can only shoot that one for, at this point. Um, once we get the ice beam, we'll come back and do this again, because I believe there's an energy tank that we can get from that one. And the plasma beam one is an artifact, so we'll have to come back at the end of the game pretty much to do that so it's it'll say a new path has opened and we're going to go get into morph ball mode again and go jump in this guy's hands and yeah it'll take us to the new path and shoot us up into this weird area and then it'll return to normal and notice that there's ice beam doors in here that we can't get through again so again we need to find some other way to get to uh, where we're headed and that's through this little morph ball area here that'll take us up to this door and there should be a scanning item here somewhere uh, to lower this force field although I don't know where it is there it is okay safety shield offline alright now you can get here a lot easier without have to, having to worry about the uh, force field and going into morph ball mode and the wave beam thing all that stuff alright so in this room here um, yeah, you'll notice that it's pretty much just a giant pool of water, and yeah, there's a bunch of stone toads surrounding the area, so first step is to destroy all four of them, because they will just make things a little bit more difficult for you later on, because this is eventually going to turn into like a half pipe area, so yeah, I'm going to get rid of them, and we can go straight into the water, into the middle, there's a little drain thingy, and we can bomb that. To drain all the water out of this pool and what will be left is just a half pipe structure that we can take up to the top area of the room because there's actually three different doors up there so yeah let's do that so boost and actually the only way to get up here because of the way the room is situated is that you actually have to get eaten by one of these stone toads so that's why they're up there and there's like three or three maybe three of them up there so get eaten kill them and there you go and now we can use our missiles to blow up the door right there there is a safe station over here but I'm guessing that's going to be in the door that's across the way because we've come across our third beam weapon of the game in the antechamber and as you can see there we go we're going to need the ice beam to get out but we are in luck because we have found just that and uh, yeah, this is actually one of my favorite weapons in the game as well. Um, I like it a lot better than the wave beam. It does fire a lot slower, but uh, it's pretty awesome. So yeah, we have the ice beam. And as you can see, when we shoot it here, it shoots in like giant ice blocks, which makes it uh, a little bit difficult to aim at moving targets, but um, it's incredibly easy to kill things such as like uh, flying pirates now. 
because all you have to do is hit them with one shot and it freezes them and you can blow them up with a missile and that's it. So you really don't have to waste um, a lot of missiles or uh, just spend a lot of time trying to kill them at all. So that's pretty exciting. Anyway, through this door here is going to be the save station for this area. So I'm going to uh, save the game and stop here. And in the next time, or in the next time, that makes a lot of sense. In the next episode, uh, we'll see what's uh, next on our list to accomplish. But anyway, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned for episode 16. Game on!